Uh, the most exciting thing for me is just to have this group together at the beginning of the year, uh, something that we didn't have last year, get to really get on the same page, get aligned, how we want to play defensively, the things that's going to make us special on the offensive end of the floor. So you get to talk about those things and then form some relationships uh, from the beginning of the year. So all that's very optimistic and exciting right now. How difficult was it last year? You make a major trade. You're trading significant players, big part of the offense. How many times could you even practice? this last year because all, all things being equal the win that you guys had in Miami was huge the comeback win in Boston how many times did you actually practice with this group last year yeah Frank we, you know we, we actually start to try to implement at least having shoot around just because as you get into the thick of things in the course of the season it's tough to ask these dudes to play 30 plus minutes and then also practice at a high level so uh, what we try to do is use the film work and also just uh, being around each other to try to get some common uh, terminology together but essentially we had three teams we had the guy from Dallas, the guys from Phoenix, and the leftover <laughs> yep. guys from Brooklyn. Yep. And so uh, trying to just uh, get on the same page as much as we could. But the good thing is a roller coaster, it starts and stops at the same place. So yep. uh, that roller coaster from last year <laughs> is over with, and uh, we get to reset this thing this year. Well, that was a roller coaster ride, and I wonder, there was a lot of stuff going on let's just put it that way when those veteran players were here before the trades how would you say it's changed in terms of there was so much stuff going on then but now it's got to be so much easier to just focus on what you need to do moving forward i think there's an appreciation for for both things uh the the idea that our organization had a chance to uh play for um you know winning the larry o'brien which we all want to do uh, that hasn't changed for us collectively as a group as an organization but we get to reestablish kind of uh, redefine who we are uh, I think sometimes you create or have chaos when you have different standards or no standards so we get a chance to create and have a standard for our organization moving forward what do you think about the summer that Mikel Bridges had? Because everyone was raving about the time that he spent with the national team. Obviously, such a huge part of it, and is going to be a big part of this team. Yeah, Frank, uh, I'm, I love when guys play international basketball. I love the, the competition piece of it, uh, the physicality, uh, figuring things out. He played for his country, uh, so it was more than just about him. I think those things carry over uh, as a leader on the team. Uh, so I'm looking forward to what's next for him, putting the ball in his hands a little bit more. Uh, he still gets the opportunity to guard the best dude on a nightly basis, so still tapping into the defensive end of the side of the floor, which he did with USA Basketball, so not forgetting that core tenant of who he is, uh, but letting him grow as an individual and seeing what all he can do from beginning to the end of a single year. Now, it's it's only October, but what can you tell us about Cam Johnson, the injury that he has, and how much, how long it'll keep him out for? Yeah, great thing is if there's something good about it, it happened early. Uh, it's not serious. Uh, something we'll be cautious about just because we don't want it to reoccur. Uh, he'll be missing definitely a few days going into camp. That part is unfortunate as we're trying to, you know, form an identity on, on second and first group. Uh, so I'll miss that part of it. But intelligent young man, he'll be around in every drill. Uh, we'll slowly bring him back into the fold, but nothing serious uh, going forward. And that's the key. He'll be back. He signed that four-year deal. How much of a nice breath was that for you to say? We got this guy's name on a contract. He's coming back. He's going to be a big part of what we do. Yeah, when you're talking about uh, reestablishing your, your, your environment, your culture, and the people who are going to be involved with that, he's a young man that you want to be uh, uh, involved in. in uh, when, you, when you talk about defining yourself, uh, great human being, intelli intelligent, he works, great teammate, so a lot of the characteristics that we want. You know, Ben Simmons has been talking a lot about what he hopes to do, and everyone's pulling for Ben Simmons, but that does reach a point. It has to happen out on the court. You look at the roster, he has accomplished really more than anybody else has from an individual standpoint. Do you believe, if healthy, he can get back to that level? That's that's the goal, Frank. Uh, it's to uh, consistently play on a nightly basis, and uh, we would love for him to get back to his all-star level. Uh, the way he impacted the game on both ends of the floor, uh, I remember doing scouting reports, and he was one of the uh, top, uh, you know, problems that you had to deal with on a nightly basis. And so uh, his ability to get down the floor play in pace play in transition for us is huge uh, so we can get early threes and then the defensive end of the, uh, the floor also we didn't rebound the ball very well last year we don't want to be in that deficit again this year and he can help that is a bigger thing for you the free throw shooting as opposed to the three-point shooting I look at guys 
like Giannis is this way, Shaq was that way as well. They would struggle from the line, but they kept being aggressive going to the basket. How important is that if he's struggling? Just be aggressive, draw contact at the rim. That's going to be huge for us. And uh, that's kind of the persistence that I'm talking about with, with our group, not only Ben, is we have to get the ball to the paint. We have to create opportunities by getting the ball to the paint. And what happens, I'm not sure. But a lot of times it is a foul. It is an offensive rebound in our favor. It is the defense overreacting and we get an open three. So it's going to be imperative that we get the ball down downhill and he's a big part of that and get it to the paint with the back issues that he had I would imagine anybody that has that wants to kind of avoid contact the real physical nature of the game have you noticed so far with him and the five on fives that I know you guys don't go out there and kill each other but that he's willing to do that and seems comfortable with that I'll say it's the most explosive I've seen him since I've been around him uh, I think he's getting to the rim getting there with force uh, doing it over and over again which is great to see um, now you get into live competition and uh, hopefully some of those things that you learned, you know, two, three years ago, you just, your mind kind of sets in. He's able to do that for us going forward. You know, Nick Claxton last year was in the conversation for most improved defensive player of the year. Clearly, every year gets better, adds something to his game. Please tell me that he's not adding three-point shooting to his game. You need guys <laughs> that can dominate around the rim and can run the court. How about his growth over the last few years? It's amazing, Frank. All these guys want to shoot the basketball and shoot it from three, which is okay, but I think uh, I'm pretty simple dude. I want him shooting free throws yeah. and so making free throws. So that's the most imperative thing for us, uh, for Nick. He's going to he's gonna grow. He, he, his game has grown. Uh, I think this has been his best offseason so far, um, and w which shows a, a s tremendous amount of professionalism by him. Hopefully, he's in the conversation of uh, some, some post-season awards uh, because he plays so well for us. He did have a problem shooting free throws at times. He got better at it last year because he put some work in. Do you see that's the kind of guy he is that works on every facet of the game and knows that he wants to be better at that at facet? It as well I think that's been the best part of seeing him you know as we drafted him grow up is uh, being in a position to recognize what his strengths are but also his weaknesses and acknowledging them and then working on them and so uh, at one point it was his body and his strength well he's done that he's got better he's got bigger got stronger uh, now the piece of can he shoot free throws can he be in, in at the game you know the last two minutes of the game uh, so those things he's worked on acknowledged them and, and addressed them yeah it, it's weird in every line of work the more experience you get, it's good for you. Except in your profession, they, they say recycled coach. It's the dumbest thing to say. <laughs> You're more experienced. How much better of a coach are you today than when you had your first job with Orlando? Yeah, without a doubt, I'm a, uh, I'd say entirely different coach. Uh, the things that I really hone in on that I think are priorities, totally different than uh, when I was a, a, a young kid coach in Orlando. I wouldn't have given up that opportunity, though. All the things that I learned, how to work with my GM, how to work with the front office, uh, the community, media, those things that uh, I took on and, and changed hopefully in a in a better way a better light uh, but just like we ask players to get better in the offseason uh, I think we should ask coaches to year by year to get better also yeah, I, I get to coach people like this on uh, live TV with none other than Royce O'Neal. Huh? Good, good. Yeah, we're doing great. Thank you. Uh, it's interesting because, again, relationships with players. How would you say your relationship has changed? People need to learn people and read people. And have you gotten better at that, I would assume? I think that becomes uh, the, the number one priority uh, as, as a coach is uh, for me to ask dudes to play extremely hard, for them to uh, care about more than themselves. Uh, I have to model that and uh, the relationships the communication uh, the co-design with these dudes to be able to understand what they see uh, and come with a, a, a answer together uh, it's, it's huge in coaching yeah and it seems like those jock born early timeouts whether it's the beginning of the game or the start of the third quarter that seems to me that's yes I don't like what's going on but also yeah, you know, I will have a relationship, but I need to hold you accountable. How about that? Without a doubt. And there will be accountability and a standard that we'll, we'll live by. And I won't, that part I'm not going to diminish and I'm not going to, uh, to give up on. Uh, I think when you don't have total buy-in and you don't have a standard, then you have chaos. Yeah, you played for some brilliant coaches on every level. Do you take a little bit from each of the guys that you played for? Without a doubt, Frank, and I still, I just talked to my college coach probably a, a week ago, and he checked in on me, and uh, so the conversations that I have, I play for some unbelievable people. I miss uh, Coach Sloan, who uh, started my career out as a professional playing, uh, so a lot of the drills I go back and look at uh, really 
you know, they, they came from my experiences and uh, fortunate to play for some high-level high level coaches. The theory of you need a star player or two to win a championship or get there, that's held by a lot of people. When you look at your team, you might not have named superstars. Ben Simmons been an all-star. Mikel Bridges played like one last year. Do you feel you have those guys or they're, they're budding on the roster somewhere? I think that's the great thing about this roster I'm looking forward to is seeing who can take that next step. I think that's great for our organization to kind of figure out as we move forward. If we put more on Mikael, can he handle that? Can we put more on Cam Johnson? Can he handle that? Can Nick Claxton handle that? You know, Spencer, Dorian, Royce are 30-year-olds. Doesn't mean they can't get better and take another step at uh, being more professional, being at an elite level condition-wise. So uh, there's some growth to be had. That part I'm looking forward to in camp. You know, Miami knocked out both Boston and Milwaukee. Both those teams in the last week. One added Damian Lillard. The Celtics got Drew Holiday. How about the, the moves that those two teams made? There's some tough starting fives there. Uh, and I think uh, we've, you know, traditionally had a tough time with, with Boston. I think that occurs the same way. Would it be? Uh, it stays the same way. Uh, their guard play is now elevated with, with those with the addition of Holiday. Um, and it changes your scouting report with Milwaukee now. And so Giannis is going downhill, and you always talked about stopping him. Now he's going to throw it to Dame at, at 40 feet. So uh, it, it'll make our challenge uh, and, and year great. I think it's great for basketball, the evolution of the game, whether it's the in-season tournament, uh, whether it is um, uh, the offense, the way they are in our league these days. Uh, it's challenging for the defense, but but great challenge. Yeah, with the new player participation policy, is that more of a challenge for you to make sure that the guys are there ready to go? I think for me, I'm, uh, I tell the guys I'm old school and new school. So my, my, my new school is, yes, I'm going to use analytics uh, uh, to make some decision making and things of that nature, but I'm old school too. I don't mind guys playing 82 games. I think there's something to that. I'll always look at taking care of the athlete though. And so we won't put them in a position where uh, uh, they're taking years off their career. Uh, but. A little old school, a little new school, Bob. And, and there's also, you know, you talk to some players, when they're on the road, they like playing the back-to-back because -back it makes for a shorter trip. They can get back home. When you played, did you feel the same way? And what do you feel about back-to-back? Because, -back? you know, there has been some talk about maybe eliminating them completely. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I do think there is something to uh, playing 82 games. I do think there is something to, you know, having three and five nights. There is a, um, uh, I don't know, um, kind of rel relentless mindset uh, that you have to have uh, that's formed in the NBA. I think it's good for guys to, to have adversity uh, and be able to fight through it and get through it and see you can get to the other side. So um, I like the challenge of the back-to-backs. And I like the challenge of the 82-game yeah. schedule. He, he played for Jerry Sloan. <laughs> yeah. You can tell. <laughs> you, you sense that, huh? <laughs> I love the word relentless. That's exactly. one you and I are going to keep an eye exactly. on all season long. Jock, thanks so much for joining us. Absolute pleasure, Appreciate guys. Best of luck. Thank Enjoy you, Vegas. Okay. We got, we'll do 